How's it going, everybody? Level M Diecast. Thanks for joining us today. We're going to get cracked into this big, huge haul that we just pulled. We're going to start with some of the green light uh, and get this just rolling down the uh, pipe stream. Uh, we're going to start with all the kind of hobby exclusive stuff. So we're going to roll through those. Of course, the trade show exclusive uh, first generation 90 Dodge D series, the Ram. Uh, we're going to take a look at that guy. We're also going to take a look at the Tahoe. You guys know how I just absolutely love the Tahoe. Uh, I just I don't even know why I'm so obsessed with that casting. I just think the green light did a good job. Uh, the 1971 Scout Comanche for uh, Bill Jenkins, his uh, good old grumpy toy there. Uh, we do have a few from the uh, FBI release, the hobby exclusive FBI release. We're going to take a look at the 2008 Dodge Charger. We're also going to take a look at the 2018 Dodge Durango Pursuit. And then the last one that we're going to take a look at for that particular mix is going to be the Mach E as well. So all in FBI deco. Uh, we do have even more police. Seems to be uh, pretty uh, emergency heavy in this mix. This is the latest release of the Chili uh, cars. Uh, Greenlight's done a ton of different ones. Um, they've done a bunch of chargers as well. So this one comes with a uh, figure, which is pretty cool. And then the one that I think is going to be the most popular of everything, um, I think a lot of people are going to be eager to check this out, myself included, the 91 GMC Suburban for first responders. So we're going to do this a little bit different this time. We're going to bring out a rotator, guys. So let's take a look. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to kick this off with our first generation Ram. Of course, the 2023 trade show exclusive this was for the Toy Fair, I believe, uh, earlier this year. Or I should say earlier in 2023, I believe. This is the first generation Ram. Um, it's kind of busy. It's kind of busy, but like I mentioned in the haul, uh, you know, it's a promotional item. It's meant to be, uh, you know, selling the brand and stuff like that. I think it's a little bit excessive to put the, the, the year on the top. I think that's a little excessive. I think green light on the hood and the doors is fine. Obviously, all your Toy Fair logos there along the side um, even have SEMA on there as well. But, uh, I mean, other than that, it's it's pretty average. It's pretty average. The uh, white hub wheels is kind of interesting. Uh, it's kind of an interesting flavor. I wish it would have been chrome. Uh, I'm not really sure why they chose white, but uh, it's 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 I. As far as the base deets, it is numbered. So this one is number 1260. So they still have the numbers on the base. So... We will roll with that. I don't think that's a bad thing. I'm glad that they do that, as a matter of fact. Uh, next one, we're going to take a look at 1971 Scout Comanche. Uh, this is for uh, Bill Jenkins. This was actually drag race. They actually raced this thing. Um, other than that, I don't know too much about it. Um, it's an interesting mix. This is uh, quite different than the uh, uh, International that came out in All Terrain. Um, so that's one of the things I like about Greenlight. They just they they can make so many tweaks to a small model um, to really make it kind of fit in just a huge huge amount of um, things and, and and series and all kinds of stuff like that. This one's okay. It's okay. It's not really necessarily my flavor, but uh, you know I I decided we were going to collect the international. So of course that means we have to chase them down and get them all. Um, as far as the top is concerned. The top does come off, so that looks pretty good. I think it, uh, it looks a little bit better with the top off, to be honest with you. Uh, no moving parts or anything like that. Uh, green light's pretty much gotten away from that uh, almost entirely. As a matter of fact, it's kind of interesting just to see uh, something that has a uh, removable top and stuff like that. But the interior looks pretty good. Quality looks pretty good on this batch of green light thus far. As far as the base deeds, there you go. It is number 518, I think. Yep, 518. So they are still numbering them. So that's still pretty cool. Uh, details on this one look pretty good. So that uh, is an interesting wheel. Interesting wheel. I believe that's a, a new wheel design, which I think is pretty cool. All right, we're going to move into, obviously, my favorite casting, pretty much, that Greenlight makes. Um, I still have yet to figure out why I'm so obsessed with the Tahoe. I just think they did such a good job. It's it's it, and it's so sizable. It's such a like beefy, good looking casting. It's not a little dinky thing 
Like, if you look at Matchbox's Tahoe from their moving parts, it's kind of small. It's got to fit in the blister. Greenlight doesn't have to worry about that problem. It's just it's just nice and beefy. Um, and this one looks really, really good. I really like this one. Push bumper on the front looks pretty good as well. The uh, utility wheels there on the side, of course, pretty iconic deco for Alabama. It's a, There's a special word for the silver, which is the base model, and they have like this like navy-ish, bluish kind of color for uh, the what would be the trunk and the hood, but this just has a hatch on it. The finer details up on this one does say State Trooper. There you go. Alabama Law Enforcement Agency. This one does not have a plate, so I guess it's not um, a specific uh, unit or anything like that, but that one looks good. If you like the details, the details on the front look good as well. That nice, big, huge grill bar on the front looks pretty good as well. As far as numbers, this one is numbered as well. This one is number 788. So lots of low numbers for these, so I'm pretty happy about that. I will take what I can get for sure, which I think is pretty cool. All right, those of you who want to see the Suburban, because I'm sure there's going to be plenty, it don't make you wait till the end. Uh, we'll bring it out right now. Um, I'm really... I'm really impressed by this casting. I'm really, really impressed. Obviously, Greenlight was fully aware of their intentions to make GMC and Chevy versions. Um, that is a given. Um, and it gives them a lot of good opportunity for this particular casting. Um, this one looks really, really good. It does have that nice guard on the front. That might be the same guard on the front that they've used for some older square bodies, which would make perfect sense especially for the utilitarian side of it. The wheels are amazing. The hubcaps look fantastic. We'll try to get some up close to that. You see this one does have a plate on that. We'll take a look at those as well. So this one is modeled after an actual unit. Unit number 688. Very, very cool looking. Very, very cool. Very retro. Um, and I think the uh, head, the uh, light bar is uh, period specific as well. Looks pretty good. The hood does not open. I know it looks like it does, but the hood does not open. There are no moving features on these green lights. It says emergency medical service right there, city of New York. Those, whoop, whoop, whoop. I'm dropping it everywhere. There is the hubcaps. There's just a little bit of print on the hubcaps, which is probably the old GMC logo. And then there is the deets on the back for the plate detail and stuff like that, which looks fantastic. Just such a good, good casting really really dig that casting uh, as far as the base deets go this one is also numbered this one is number 99 so very very low number very very good details on the base four-wheel drive looks good uh, this one's not particularly done up for a trailer hitch uh, but i think that that is a uh, modification that will certainly come down the pipeline i don't see any reason why they would not make a trailer hitch for that um, to be very, very, very popular. All right, our Chili Dodge Charger. Greenlight has done uh, a bunch of different ones for the Chili Police, um, and I think that that is a pretty cool uh, setup there. This particular one does come with an officer, which is very, very cool. They have quite a bit of print and stuff on it, a lot of detail to it. It looks fantastic. I think the quality of the figures is actually pretty good. Uh, he's even got a little bit of print in there for the badge, um, which looks good. Uh, this particular charger does have an opening feature. We'll take a look at that here in a minute. But uh, fit and finish is always kind of a question mark with green light. Um, this one looks pretty decent. I think it looks pretty good. Um, this one should be more of the kind of new direction of quality. Pretty much everything we're looking at right now should really be part of the new style of quality with green light. Um, and so far, it looks good so far. Um, but... Um, Time will tell. Time will tell. They need to uh, really put up a lot of uh, time before we say, yes, you're good to go. There is the figure right there where it looks okay. It's nothing fancy. It's just a figure. The charger, like I said, does have an opening feature. So get the hood open there. There is your Hemi down in there. It's just the 5.7 Hemi. Nothing fancy. But it does have the opening hood. Uh, which actually fits pretty good as well. There is the deets there. That could be 1562, 1862. Uh, who knows? But uh, that's the number up there. It might be 1862. Probably 1862 is probably the number. 
But uh, this casting's been around for a little bit, so nothing particularly new with that particular casting. Uh, we'll kick it a little bit old school for the next one. We'll take the charger back to the first generation four-door charger. This was a kind of a big deal when Greenlight did it. Um, this is an okay casting. Uh, I've never been a huge fan of the car in real life. Never been a real big fan of the casting. I don't think that uh, the first generation four-door was a particularly nice or attractive car. But that's just my opinion. Um, you know, even being a Mopar nut. But uh, that's just that's just how I rolled. This one does have an opening hood as well. So we'll take a look at that. It does have just the white light bar on the top. Looks pretty good. FBI police. I don't know if I've ever particularly seen like an actual FBI police car. Um, you know, you see those, you see them on TV and news, or not news, but uh, uh, shows and TV shows and stuff or like NCIS type of things. You know, you see like FBI police on there. Sorry about that. But uh, this one, it, it's okay. It's just another charger. Uh, nothing really fancy with that. We'll see if I can get the hood to open up. It's a little bit of a pain in the butt. So we'll get this cracked open a little bit. There we go. It looks pretty good. This one does have quite a bit of detail down in there. I do like all the uh, effort in there. Um, this one looks pretty good. It's the uh, it's the SRT8 motor down in there, but that's that's okay. So and then there is your plate details right there. Of course, obviously based on an actual uh, patrol unit. The plate is super super small in the back. I do apologize about the. Lack of focusing there, just a little bit. It's a little bit pain in the butt. There we go. A little bit better. But uh, that is the charger. Then taking a look at our base deeds, we'll flip this around the correct direction. See if this one is numbered. It is number 1966. So 1966 is the number for that guy. Very interesting. Too bad it wasn't a 66 charger. All right, we're going to flip into SUV mode. We do have our Mach E GT uh, for the FBI police. Uh, I don't know if they actually have a Mach E GT, but uh, I'm sure that they want to. They're the whole green EV push thing. Um, so I'm sure when Greenlight's like, hey, we're going to do a thing, they're like, well, you need to include an electric car in there. Um, that would be my assumption. Uh, this one looks pretty good, though. Uh, I think the Mach E GT casting from Greenlight is actually really good. Not a fan of the car in real life, but uh, I think the casting is very good. I think the details, the fit and finish looks good. I like the uh, decision for just to paint it on tail lights. I think at some point in time, you know, you, you got to get away from the lensed lights. It's just not, not particularly a good detail look uh, unless you're getting into super high quality parts like Mini GT does. And green light's just not there. They're just not there. But this one looks pretty good. And then, of course, there is your faux grill in the front because, of course, it is an EV. It doesn't need a grill. This one, obviously, based on a actual rolling unit, too. And get that to focus a little bit. Sorry about that. There we go. Sort of. do apologize about that. The plate is really small. It looks kind of big on the screen, but I assure you it is tiny. Uh, as far as the numbers on the base, it is 1465. You see right there next to the copyright number. So these ones are much, much higher numbers than the ones that I've been pulling out from the rest. We will pull out the Durango to roll out with this one. This one, unfortunately, doesn't have the uh, the bull bars in the front. And I think, at least in my opinion, I think that that makes a big difference with the Durango. Uh, you know, just the standard Durango with the light bar on it, it's just kind of weird. Um, it looks more like it's trying to be like a... Like a rent -a cop or maybe like a like one of those Walmart security guards that are driving around, you know. But uh, I think when you put a you know push guard on, it looks a little bit more proper as a as an actual legitimate police vehicle. Um, as you noticed on the windshield, there's still a lot of that residue, a lot of that material from manufacturing. Um, it's a really really big problem with green light. Clearly, that problem still exists. Still going on. Um, I've gotten a lot of models where it's inside the glass as well, which is impossible because then you're just stuck with it. But uh, if it's on the outside of the glass, at least it's a little bit better. Um, sometimes it rolls off, sometimes it doesn't. That one's not particularly that great. But just another Durango. Um, we've seen about uh, 20 or so versions of the Durango thus far. This one, unit number 179. Again, with your plate number on the back, there is the DEETS. 
might be a little bit of uh, uh, might be a little bit of uh, like barcode print in there as well. Looks like this one they missed the D, so this one's just a Urango. This is a Urango, a Urango, not a Durango, just a Urango. So very interesting, very interesting. That's uh, that's ridiculous. They literally, literally missed the letter D. It just says Urango. Ah, blows me away. All right, base deets here. This one is sixteen or eighteen ninety. There is the number there. It's kind of weird that the uh, print goes opposite of the copyright print, which is weird. Uh, but this guy does done up for a trailer hitch as well. Uh, that's just something that they've done. So I think what we'll do is we'll just roll out with our fibbies, our FBI police for Greenlight. And uh, we'll get to the rest of this stuff as well. And uh, drop a comment. Let me know what you guys think about those models. Let me know if you're going to pick those up or uh, if you think they're garbage too. Or if even if you have a comment about Greenlight's um quality you know because that's uh that's a thing so anyways we're gonna roll out appreciate you guys thank you very much love you peace